Welcome to Tiger Tracks, your home for the best of LSU athletics. And now, your hosts, Jordy Holtberg and Bill Frankens. Hello, Tiger fans everywhere. Welcome to Tiger Tracks. He's Bill. I'm Jordy. Since last we met, we saw where the LSU Tigers will go bowling. It's Houston. They'll take on uh, in the Texas Bowl, the Advocare Texas Bowl, Texas Tech, on a Tuesday night. Um, and uh, great. Tickets have been selling like hotcakes. Yeah, they really have. Anytime LSU can play in Houston, it's it's great for the university. Yep. It's great for the football program. Uh, outside of Louisiana, Houston has the largest LSU alumni base right. in the country. So uh, we've had great response from the people in Houston, great response from the LSU fans. As you said, Jordy, the tickets are nearly sold out of LSU's allotment. So the Tigers are back at NRG Stadium on the 29th. Looking forward to a great matchup of two contrasting yes, styles indeed, yes, between indeed. the Tigers and Texas Tech. It's a very quiet time on campus. It's final exam week, so no activities going on as students get their exams and get their classroom activities taken care of. Basketball right around the corner. Women's and men's both get back in action on Sunday. That's right. The men will be on the road going to, as Houston. Matter, going to Houston. How about that? <laughs> uh, the Tigers will play the University of Houston on Sunday afternoon. The game time has been adjusted. It's a 4.30 p.m. tip-off on Sunday afternoon. Meanwhile, the women are back at home on Sunday. They host a UC Santa Barbara 3 p.m. tip-off in the Maravich Center, and okay. basketball will get back in the full in the swing. swing. Yeah. Uh, softball is on the agenda, bowl previews on the agenda, and much, much more as we roll on during this holiday season. This is Tiger Tracks, and we're on CST. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Tiger Tracks on CST. Bill Frankes, Jordy Helper. We begin the show with a preview, LSU versus Texas Tech. The last time these two teams played, there was a young sophomore named Billy Cannon that right. they had a long punt return for a touchdown and a reception or a run for a touchdown. Uh, they hadn't played very often. Exactly. Last time they played was 1957, Seven. of course, the year before LSU's first national championship. Back in the Texas Bowl later this month, Garrett Walford has a preview of Texas Bowl between LSU and Texas Tech. For a school record 16th year in a row, the LSU Tigers are headed back to the postseason. The 2015 Texas Bowl matches up LSU and Texas Tech at NRG Stadium in Houston. The Red Raiders from the Big 12 sport a wide open offense that's racked up the second most yards in the nation this year. Coach Les Miles is eager for the challenge that Tech presents. Very uh, glad to be invited to the Advocare Bowl in uh, Houston, Texas. And, uh, um, it's a great venue for, for our, our players and our, our fans. Um, our uh, recruiting efforts there are certainly significant. And uh, we recruit our student population from that area. It's a, uh, uh, a, uh, a major um, uh, city, and it's a uh, great place for us. Cliff Kingsbury has them going. They're, they're uh, I think, second in the nation in total offense. And, uh, Again, uh, they won their last two games. They beat a, a, a very good uh, Arkansas team, and, and uh, it's going to be a challenge for our guys. We look forward to it. Uh, I think our, our secondary will be, um, you know, 
looking forward to that challenge and our defensive line linebackers, uh, you know, playing a, a very diverse offense. Texas Tech is 7-5 and five on the year and already counts one victory against an SEC team in Arkansas. Their offense has been the key to their turnaround. The Red Raiders rebounded from a losing season in 2014 and have much improved quarterback play from Pat Mahomes II. Mahomes has thrown for over 4,200 yards and 32 touchdowns in his sophomore season. The 6'3", 220-pounder was the number one quarterback recruit in the state of Texas while also getting drafted by the Detroit Tigers out of high school. His top target is Jakeem Grant, a 5'7 senior who's accounted for 1,100 yards and seven touchdown catches in 2015. Three other wideouts have accounted for 500 yards receiving or more this season, pushing the Tech passing attack to 360 yards per game. But what about the running game? Tailback DeAndre Washington is not an afterthought by any means, averaging 121 yards per game and 6.5 yards per carry. The 5'8 seniors run for over 1,400 yards and 14 touchdowns in his final season, and at 200 pounds will be tough to wrap up. On defense, senior linebacker Pete Robertson leads the team in tackles for loss and sacks and has twice been named all Big 12. Texas Tech does give up 271 yards rushing per game and opponents are averaging over 42 points scored in regulation. LSU and Tech have a little history but haven't played each other in almost 60 years. Let's take a look back at the first two meetings between the Tigers and Red Raiders in black and white. LSU and Texas Tech first met in 1954, when the school was then known as Texas Technical College and played in something called the Border Conference. On October 16th, Gaynell Tinsley's LSU club hosted top 20 Texas Tech in a night game at Tiger Stadium. Coming off an 11-1 season the year prior, Tech was undefeated, but LSU would score the upset 2013. Tech only lost two games all season. In 1957, with Hall of Famers Jimmy Taylor and Billy Cannon in the same backfield, LSU traveled to Lubbock, Texas. The Tigers again were victorious, 1914, at Jones Stadium. Coach Paul Dietzel and LSU used that 5-5 five five season to springboard into 1958 when the Tigers would go undefeated and win the national championship. LSU and Texas Tech will kick off December 29th at 8 p.m. Central in Houston. The 2015 Texas Bowl marks the sixth time this year an LSU game will be broadcast on ESPN, the most of any school in the nation. Happy holidays, everyone. Reporting for Tiger Tracks, I'm Garrett Walvard. And same to you, Garrett. Thank you very much. They got that really cool mask. It looks like Zorro on oh, the yeah, horse yeah. with the hat and That's the right. mask. You know, it looks pretty right. cool. That'll be fun. Yeah, Kingsbury, of course, is a former quarterback at Texas Tech. He was the offensive coordinator at A&M during the Johnny Manziel right. era. Right. Now he's taken over the, the Tech program. So it uh, should be quite a challenge. should be a lot of fun to watch. All um, O, no D at yeah. Texas Tech. <laughs> That's, That's right. all I'm going to say. We'll take a quick time out when we come back. Beth Tarina, softball coach in her fifth year, joins us live right here on Tiger Tracks.
Welcome back to Tiger Tracks here on CST alongside Bill Frankes. I'm Jordy Heldberg. Beth Tarina, softball coach extraordinaire, now in her fifth season uh, at the pitch, uh, joining us today and a team fresh off a college World Series appearance in Oklahoma City. And uh, great to have you back. Here we is, we're approaching another new season. But let's talk about last year before this year and how that success you have built upon it leading up to this season. It was a really exciting year last mm -hmm. year. I think our team did a great job. Um, had some close moments down the stretch, <laughs> but I think, you know, that adversity really pushed us through to being where we were at the end of the season, and it was a fun season for all of us. What a great group of young women we have, and not just talented, but great human beings, too. So I'm enjoying being their coach and looking for another great year. There you go. All right. Well, Beth, the great news is that uh, most of those players returned from last year. Uh, on paper, you guys uh, appear to be loaded. So j just talk about uh, the... the uh, the expectations that this team has. I know you've, you've been through fall practice. How did it go? How, did you, how do you guys look forward to this year? Well, too bad the game's not played on paper. It'd yeah. be a little easier. <laughs> Shucks. But Shucks. on paper, we do have a great team. And, you know, we're going to miss our senior leadership from last year. Kaylee, Dylan, AJ Andrews, you know, will be some big shoes to fill. But uh, we have a great freshman class we've added. I think our returners, we actually returned five All-Americans, which is Wow. You know, not only did we have the most All-Americans in the country, but we return all of them. So that's pretty amazing. I think, you know, it would be tough for other teams to match that. So I think, you know, bringing that experience, we've been there, we've done that, I think that's going to be um, something that really sets us up well for leading into the season. I, I, I equate it to what's happening here and now. You've had a great season a year ago. you got a lot of people returning. Golden State won a championship last year. Now they're 23-0 and as we're speaking. They've obviously bought into what's going on. How do you as a coach – continue that motivation, keeping it fresh, keeping it different, but then still getting your message across. I think that's the toughest part about heading into this season is trying to live with the expectations that we have based on last year and trying to not be complacent right, and think right. that, you know, we're good enough and we can just walk out and be people. We're having to really push and I think we've tried to really preach the message that you know when you're pretty when you're good it's tough to continue to get better from that spot you know when you're just an average team making big strides is easy yeah, well point. now yeah. making small strides is really tough though when you're at that elite level and we've tried to really preach how hard they need to work um, I'm happy with the fall that we had I think that they did work hard they put up even better numbers in the weight room and conditioning than they did last year where they broke all kinds of school records so um, you know, I like the fall that we had. I think they worked hard. I think obviously we still have a ways to go, but mm -hmm. we have some time to get there. And, you know, like I said, everything on paper is lining up for a great season. Now they have to come together, though, and right. do it. All right. One of the, the cornerstones of your program, Beth, is always establishing a theme uh, that, that <laughs> inspires the players to greatness and obviously has worked yeah. through your first four years. Talk about this year's theme and, and how it's going to continue that tradition. This year's theme is called The Next. Um, it's all about taking our game to the next level, focusing on the next pitch, the next at bat, the next thing that happens to us, and, you know, just trying to be the next great team. That's kind of our, our theme for the year, and, and we talk a lot about just having that next pitch mentality, and it doesn't matter who we play next. It's the next opponent that we're trying to focus on, so um, that's the theme for the year, and hopefully it leads <laughs> us to, to great things. You put a, a lot of time and thought into that, and how many people <laughs> do you kind of lean on to help you come up with it? Because every year it's, it seems better and better. Better. I remember the map you had one time, right? And then it just keeps going. This year we have another puzzle, and we have, um, you know, a thing that they get after practice. And then in our, in our facility, there's a ladder. So it's about getting to the next okay. rung of the ladder, and the players of the day get their names on the ladder. So creative. Um, we've yes. always got stuff going. My staff is very creative. <laughs> Lindsey, Quinn, Howard, they do a great job coming up with these ideas, that's for sure. Absolutely. Well, Beth, uh, you guys always have had the reputation of playing a very strong schedule. That is indeed the case this year. Before we break, just a quick outlook on the schedule, especially at home. Yeah, our home, you know, just the SEC ser series alone that we host at home are unbelievable with Alabama and Florida coming here. And then I think the crown jewel of the schedule is the final weekend of the season. We host a three-game series with Washington, which is so yeah. rare and so interesting. We both just happen to have the bye week in our conferences. So I think that's going to be something that's really neat, different for the fans here in Baton Rouge. It's the purple challenge, right? Yeah. Everybody wearing all yeah, purple. Yeah, but yeah. Um, we're really excited about uh, having them here. All right, we're going to take a quick time out. When we come back on paper, it looks great. We're going to find out who's on that paper that makes it look so great when we continue with Beth Torina here on Tiger Tracks. Tiger Tracks on CST is being brought to you by Capital One Bank, the official bank of all things Louisiana, and by Louisiana Propane Dealers. Get up to $1,200 in rebates on propane accessories. Find out how at louisianapropane.com.
We are back on Tiger Tracks as we continue our conversation with Beth Torina, uh, previewing LSU softball season. It all starts in the circle to me. Let's talk about this, this pitching staff that uh, you bring back some veterans and you know, mix it in with some newcomers. Well, when we talk about All-Americans, two of them are in the circle, which is pretty phenomenal to have two people at the wow. same position. So uh, they're both only sophomores, Carly Eesh. Hoover, Allie Wall, Jasper. They are a great pair. They're very different looks on the mound. And both great competitors in their own right. So, you know, they'll they'll be some of the mainstays in the staff. We still have Bailey Corbello, who's got the most experience. She'll just continue to anchor us and do what Bailey does so well. And then we're adding a freshman, Sydney Smith, who's the Gatorade Player of the Year huh? from Minnesota. Huh? Uh, another six foot tall. Um, <laughs> Flamethrower. <laughs> athlete. She's, she's um, going to be a great addition to the staff, I think. Um, she's had a lot of growth this fall, too, on top of already being really talented. She hits, too. She's a special player. So you'll see her added to the rotation early, and then, you know, I think they'll all get opportunities early in the season. We'll whittle it down when SEC play comes. Great competition amongst the four to, to be able to only vie for a couple of spots. That's That's got to be great for you. This is hands down the most depth we've had as a program since I've been the coach here. So we have competition all over the place. I'm glad I'm not competing in a few of these spots because it is tough, tough competition with some great players. Beth, how important is it to have that type of diversity that you mentioned, like last season, the, the diversity between Hoover and Wall Jasper to give hitters different looks? I think that's a big reason why we were successful down the stretch is that we had two different pitchers. I think a lot of people try and still rely on one, and I think, you know, my two trips to the World Series here with LSU, it was a two-pitcher tandem that really made it with yeah. Mac and Fico and then, you know, with Wall Jasper and Hoover. I think, you know, having the two of them has really led us to be successful there in the postseason. Interesting. Uh, in the everyday lineup, um, it, it just seems to get better and better. You're hitting the ball like crazy out the ballpark. Uh, let's talk about some of your players that play every day. Well, we've got three of them that are going to be going to the U.S. national team trials. Bianca Bell played on the team last summer, and Bailey Landry, Emily Griggs, who played on the junior national team, but all three of them will be at the trials here in January. Wow, awesome. Um, that's going to, I would say, be the top of our lineup. Add them to Savannah Jaquish, who plays you know, with the Puerto Rican national team, too, also getting that international experience. Um, Kelsey Claus, Sandra Simmons are great senior leaders for us that put up really good numbers. So um, it's a great top of the lineup, I think. You know, I, I'm excited about that group, and the numbers they put up last year are just phenomenal. So I would expect them to, you know, I don't know if they can improve on it, but I hope that they can continue <laughs> next, working to get better. Next, the next. Yeah, the next the level. Next. Yes, there for you sure. Go. For sure. The one uh, veteran player that, that uh, graduated last year is A.J. Andrews. She performed in your outfield and, and, and at the top of your lineup. How difficult is it to replace someone like her? She's irreplaceable, there's no question. I, I think, you know, at the top of the lineup, Emily and Bailey will, will be great there. They're great offensive players. I think doing what she does defensively, she's so special. I mean, the plays she made out there were sports center like every mm -hmm. day. So I think <laughs> we're going to have a tough time replacing that. Both Emily and Bailey are practicing out there right now, um, both trying to do it. And they're both great players in their own right. So, um, you know, they'll get the job done for sure. But we will miss AJ, of course. She was a great leader for us and just a fun player to be around. I love just even watching her in practice every day, <laughs> you know, the plays that she would make. So, um, you know, we'll miss that. But we have a couple great kids that will anchor us out there. And uh, the battle for that last outfield spot is a tough, tough one. I wouldn't want to be in that group. You had a fall session. Did you see anything that surprised you? Any player that really stepped up above and beyond what you'd seen before? You know, the one we really like is a freshman from Atlanta, Georgia, and we like them all. I don't want to mm -hmm. say that, but um, Shamaya Sanchez, um, she really, really impressed us. She is um, a middle infielder. She'll see some time at second base. Uh, she may even hit in the middle of the lineup. She's really talented. She's a little tiny. You wouldn't think she'd hit for as much power as she does, but she has a ton of power. Her and Amber Surrett is another freshman we brought in from Houston, Texas. Both of them had awesome, awesome falls, and they're going to get some time in the spring based on their performance. On paper, it sounds great. <laughs> it, uh, and look, great place to see a ball game, Tiger mm -hmm. Park, great home schedule as always, and a really, really good softball team. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to you, and good luck. Same to you. Thank All you right, for having me. We'll take a time out. We'll come back with more. This is Tiger Tracks on CST. We need some Christmas music. Tiger Tracks on CST is being brought to you by Capital One Bank, the official bank of all things Louisiana, and by Louisiana Propane Dealers. Get up to $1,200 in rebates on propane accessories. Find out how at louisianapropane.com.
Welcome back to Tiger Tracks on CSD. A very important part of any university is those that receive their education, get their degree, and go out and find success in the working world. They're giving back to the university that presented them that opportunity. We call it philanthropy, yep. and LSU certainly, like every school, is in need of it. Yeah, this is a really a nice video. Uh, it shows uh, some testimonials from students who've been the beneficiaries of philanthropic giving, and, and they're going to go on and make great differences in our society. Let's take a look. I really have loved every minute of this experience and I'm so thankful for the Stamp Scholarship. Everything from the research opportunities to the people here to the culture, it was just something that I couldn't get anywhere else. LSU is like a big family. Everyone is like really close and we're all unified under the purple and gold. I really wanted to come to LSU pretty much since I was in elementary school. I just had always loved the culture of LSU and Louisiana as a whole. You could grow here, you could develop here, you could prosper here and get to a level that you want to be. It's not just about getting a job, it's truly about investing in yourself so you can reach out and do great things for yourself and for your community. I thought I could just like look into colleges, wow this has a nice program, but I didn't take in the financial aspect until I sat down with my parents and they talked to me about it because they really couldn't afford to send me to college anywhere. That was probably one of the best phone calls of my life. I ended up getting the scholarship and actually being able to come here for my freshman year. It really led to all of this and now I'm a senior here and I really have loved every minute of this experience. It's more along the lines of a grant. They literally fund you and give you money to start up and go back into your own specific program. My program was making a minority youth outreach program for underprivileged minority males who are of an adolescent age of uh, pre-matriculation to college. Kind of acts as a fellowship. We are linked up with different faculty mentors that are supposed to help us throughout our four years. The fact that someone like goes out of their way to help others succeed, it's like a really great feeling. Something I would say to those who really want to give to students or to universities just as a whole is really to know that you're making a difference. No matter how small or how large what you're giving is, it's really going to touch someone's life and can make a student live up to the full potential that they were meant to be. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I can't be grateful enough to those who choose to purposely give back to LSU and back to programs such as this. It shows great altruism on their part, great sense of community and wanting to give back, which is what LSU's community is all about and it truly brings us together. What a heartwarming story. Yeah, very, very well done. Very well done. Absolutely. Uh, those, th those are just three example, uh, examples of how uh, giving back to LSU can make a difference in so many lives. Those three young people are going to yeah, go on and do tremendous, yeah. tremendous work in their chosen fields. And they will philanthropically give exactly. back to others as well. And that's what it's all about, giving back to others so they can improve and move on. All right, we'll be back next week for another edition, and we'll find out then how LSU basketball is doing. And uh, bowl preparations will be starting. They'll have 12 practices leading up to the Texas Bowl, so the beat goes on. Absolutely. And of course, this has also been a key recruiting period yes. for Coach Les Miles and his staff. Uh, it's shaping up to be a fantastic class. All projections uh, have the Tigers certainly within the top five. So it looks like a lot of talent will be coming into Baton Rouge. And before we know it, we'll be talking <laughs> about, uh, about spring football and, yeah. and looking ahead to the fall. And congrats to Jim Hawthorne for receiving the Chris Schenkel yeah. Award at the National Football Foundation in New York at the plush Waldorf Astoria. Very nice. For Bill, I'm Jordy. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week on Tiger Tracks.